At the end of this video, I'm going to be putting a little thing at the end because I'm actually filming this after I filmed the review for this interesting piano. Um, I was talking about the book matching that's found on the fallboard, and I mentioned that there wasn't actually any faces on it, but afterwards I was looking at it and taking some pictures, and I do think that I do see a face in the book matching. So at the end of this video, I'll put a picture of it, and let me know what you think. It's like a, the ink blot test, except it's on a piano. And after a couple days of having the video up, I will let you guys know what I think that it looks like. Let me know what you think that the book matched image on the, um, the fallboard looks like. But with any further ado, let's get into reviewing an Erard piano. Today I'm here at DC Pianos in Berkeley, California with a really fantastic, interesting piano that some of you guys have asked me to review. Not this specific model of piano, but you, I think some of my followers have asked me if I have ever played an Erard piano. And that is what this is. Now, Erard was a French manufacturer from way back in the day who was very well known for making high quality pianos. People to this day still enjoy playing on the antique Erard pianos. They've lasted and aged very well. And this one, I would say, is no exception. This one has been restored at some point in the past. A piano technician actually owned it. He refinished it and he, re he put new strings in it some time ago and he basically loved it to pieces. And I can definitely see that the action is in very good condition. It actually plays surprisingly well, and the piano as a whole is really in amazing condition, even though it's from 1850s, thereabouts. It's from the 1850s, which is really interesting. Here's a feature of pianos from back in the day, and even later than the 1850s, but this was the music desk. That's what they liked to do back then. I've seen it on Beckstein uprights and stuff from back in the day, and they used to have this fold away music desk. And uh, so it's kind of interesting. It's a very delicate, smooth, clever way of hiding away the music desk. I guess this might've been before the idea of integrating it into the fallboard became a mass idea. But that is your music desk, which is kind of cool. But I personally think the piano looks better with it put away and I don't think I'll be needing it today. So I will put it back like that. I think it looks a little better because it doesn't distract from the beautiful woodwork on this piano. As you can see, it has some really ornate it's like a grill. It's, there's fabric behind here and it allows sound to escape, which means this piano has a very loud sound, especially because I got the top open. And it's got a grill here and a grill here and it allows sound to come out and it's really cool. And also the wood is gorgeous. It's burl walnut and it's been book matched, which means each side reflects itself. You can see there's a little line that runs here and each side is a mirror image of the other side. Sometimes that can lead to symmetrical shapes and faces in the wood, but this one doesn't really have any of that. Um, but it's a really, really beautiful piano. Uh, one thing I've never seen before on any piano or any furniture or anything is these particular legs. They're more than spirals, they're more than beadwork. They're a literal corkscrew shaped leg. It's like you could make it sharp and drill a hole into something with it. I've never seen anything like that before and it's really, really unique. There's also more grills in the bottom panel here of the piano as well to help let even more sound out. Another thing here that I wanted to talk about of the aesthetics of the piano that I'm going to be showing you a close-up of here is the logo here. Now this isn't a painted on logo and it's not something that has been simply, it's not a stencil that's been slapped onto the top of the piano. This is actually a brass inlay that was inlaid into the wood and this was a very common procedure back in the day in the 1850s and even into the early 1900s because labor wasn't so much of a huge thing then. People could, people had the money to spend hours and hours and hours working on a piano and then it would actually have a market to be sold to. Pianos were wildly popular way back in the day. There were thousands of manufacturers of pianos in America alone. The other thing you'll see here is that this was actually made in London. For a short period of time, Erard, which was a French manufacturer, was actually making pianos in London in the 1850s, and that is where this piano came from. So that's really rather interesting as well. Maybe some people think it's not a true Erard or something. I have no idea. But I was able to find an Erard, so be happy with that. They're not very common here in America. America, they, most of them are over in Europe. I think very few of them have made it over here. This is the first one that I have ever seen. So without any further ado, let me play some things on it. Um, normally I start off with my personal test piece. I can see how that sounds on here, but the tone of this particular piano is a bit different from a modern upright piano. Um, it actually does not have a birdcage action in it, which was a type of action from back in the day. It has a more modern design action, which is why it works as well as it does. But the sound of it, the amount of sustain it has, and it just sounds different. So I don't know how well this will actually work but let's give it a try.
As you can hear, it has a much different sound than a modern piano would. Part of that's because of the hammers. They're very small, they're very narrow, they're very delicate, and many of them are in fact original. Some people would probably think about replacing the hammers, but they're also a lot different, as I said, from a modern hammer. So that's part of what makes this unique is the fact that it sounds so much different. The other thing I'm noticing is that there's far less sustain on this particular piano than on a modern piano would be, even in the lower registers. there's just not as much presence. When you play the note, it doesn't soar the same way that a modern piano would be even an upright. And perhaps that's because the dampers need some adjustment, or it's perhaps it's simply because we've made so many improvements in the way a piano works since 1855. One piece that I do think works very well on this piano, though, is Bach, because the sound of this piano reminds me of a clavichord. So let me play a little bit of a Bach fugue from the Well-Tempered Clavier. Hope you like it. I think it sounds perfect on this piano. It doesn't do trills very well, but the tone of that piano really reminds me of a clavichord. It really reminds me of something that Bach might have actually played on. It has that kind of that plinky tone. It really works very well for that type of music. Something else that perhaps would have been played on a piano similar to this, it was written a few years after this one was made. This piece, I believe, was written in 1890s. But let's play a little bit of Debussy's Claire de Lune on it and see how that sounds. That particular piece really sounds best on a piano with a lot of sustain, but I figured that I'd play that on this piece anyway. Debussy was French, Erard is French. It's a pretty good pairing overall. You can really tell though just how much we've come along with pianos. Listen to how much more sustain there would be on a modern piano than up here. There's like nothing. It's very, very plinky. So you can really tell, even though this piano is gorgeous and I love it, it's a work of art and it's very interesting from a historical standpoint. As a musical instrument, a modern piano definitely is a little bit better. Although this piano does have an interesting strong point. It's one I wouldn't have expected and that's playing loud, fast music. Check this out.
Yeah, you probably didn't expect it would do that very well, did you? I didn't either, but I decided to try it and it does it way too well. It's kind of crazy and weird how well it's able to do music like that. I don't get it. It's from 1855, but again, that piece was written in 18, earlier than that, so pianos of the day were able to do it. It's just pretty surprising to me because certain things just simply don't work great on this piano, but other things do. Bach fugues and Beethoven's third movement of Moonlight Sonata. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of an Erard. It's such a cool piano, even though it may not be quite as um, well refined as a modern piano. There are elements of it that are far more refined. People don't do brass inlays anymore, and generally people don't do uh, art cases that are quite this elaborate anymore. Unfortunately, I wish people did more elaborate art case panels like this. I think it's possible. It would be very easy to program a computer to do this and just have it printed out and slap it on a piano. But there is also something that's really cool about this being, you know, hand carved. And that's what makes it special because no one does it anymore. If everyone did these, then this would lose some of its specialness. So hopefully you enjoyed this Erard piano. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's such a unique, quirky, unusual instrument. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel and see some of my other content if you haven't done that before. If you enjoyed it, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.